Welcome back to a rather late episode of Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, and shall we see what's going on on our lovely island of Fornado today? Um, I'll be honest, there's not really much reason why this episode is particularly late. You know, I could have recorded it a little bit earlier. Um, I just didn't, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I just, I, ju I just didn't get around to it, you know. Sometimes it happens, but, you know, sometimes when th the things happen and it's late, it just gets even later. But, you know, it's not the latest episode of recording of Animal Crossing. I've... I don't know what record I actually. I don't know what the latest I've recorded an Animal Crossing episode is. I think I've, I've I've must have recorded one like past midnight at one point, which is um certainly not something I would do particularly often. I do remember actually like a very early on, um, I recorded some episodes past nine pm to catch um, to catch um a golden trout or a string fish. I can't remember what one of the really late night fish. But anyway, good evening everyone. Right now in Fawn Hall, it's eleven oh eight pm on Thursday, September fifteenth, twenty twenty two. Um, did I finish up? You know what I should have done is I, I should have finished uploading all, all the videos I had <laughs> today because um, I recorded some Cuphead videos but um, they, they never finished uploading because they're very big um, for whatever reason. Uh, I haven't responded to comments for ages and I apologise and I was meant to do it on Saturday but then I didn't and it's almost Saturday again so it's been about two weeks but you know sometimes it happens. You, you lot are used to that probably if you expect comments. Or any replies and then uh, sometimes that happens. Um, no I just got, just got kind of distracted you know. I was meant to record around like um, 7, 8-ish or something and then I just didn't. Uh, I, I got a little bit distracted actually amusingly looking at my like, graphics tablets and, and stuff like that because I, well actually you know, um, is it something that has been on my mind for a while that I've, um, you might be like, hey what graphics tablet do you use? I use uh, the Huion Q11K um, and I've been using it for, I don't even know how long it's been, three, f must have been for more than three years maybe. Or maybe about three years. Actually I, I honestly can't remember but certainly before I started uh, the channel. I had this tablet, but I've had this tablet for quite a while. Um, no, it, it must be more than three years. I feel like I had it during university time. Is that true? It might be like six years or something. My word, that's a, that's a very long time basically to be using this tablet. And I, I was basically thinking to myself, being like, you know what? At some point, I should probably upgrade to a better tablet. And by upgrade, I mean I should probably finally get um, a display tablet. Um, or something along that ilk because you know I've, I've used graphics tablets um, and I don't know if that's the official name graphics tablets are ones without displays for like basically um, most of my you know time doing art uh, the first like the first one I had was some very cheap not that cheap but it was like 16 pounds or something monoprice tablet which um, I don't mean to go on online play um, monoprice tablet I don't remember what I wanted it was it was not great um, will probably be how I describe it but it was it was incredibly just sort of like a basic one because I just wanted to sort of like dip my toes into digital, digital art. I mean, at some point I got uh, a better one. I got this Huion Q11K. And honestly, uh, in retrospect, I definitely should have just started on this tablet rather than starting on that monoprice one. Nothing, I don't have anything particularly against that monoprice one, but really it's sort of like night and day starting with like that very cheap uh, one and like with very few sensitivity, sensitivity levels to this one where everything feels just so much smoother using it. Um, but I, understandably, I didn't because um, this one cost, uh, I think it was about £81 or something uh, when I first bought it. Which, you know, at the time when I bought it was, you know, a bit of a steep price. Oh, no, it's not actually that steep, I'm going to be honest. Um, but it was um, certainly at the time, you know, um, when I didn't buy things very often. What? I didn't know Cornimer had a, had a time where he actually went to sleep. Or Tortimer. I guess it makes sense, you know. He's quite old. Probably don't want him to wait past 11 pm. I don't think I've ever been on Harvest Island this late, so. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. So I've had this graphics tablet for a very long time, and, you know, since it's been quite a few years, I'm like, maybe I should upgrade. Um, so I was looking basically into it, and it's basically at the higher price points, which is what I'm looking at. I'm not, I'm not looking at the, quite the professional. I'm not looking to spend thousands yet on a graphics tablet, but maybe a couple hundred I've been looking, uh, I've been looking to expand. Um, then I'll stick with that one for maybe like five more years, six more years until, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe then I'll sort of like splash out and be like, okay, now it's time to get one of those real professional tablets because that's what I want. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll be like, this, uh, this, uh, the display tablet is enough for what I need. But basically it looks like there aren't many options, I suppose, out of a, of a higher end. Well, it's not that many options. What I mean is there's not many like clear, definite winners at the higher ends because at that point, um, there are a lot of brands, you know, like uh, Intuos, Wacom, probably others you know you can get some like you start you can start buying like tablets like ipads and um microsoft surfaces at that sort of level uh that well, when you get to that point it's sort of like there's no clear winner of like tablets at certain price points um 
not saying that this one necessarily was a clear winner, but there are definitely some go-to recommended ones that people always say, like um, the the interest the Wacom Intuos Touch, is that what it's called? I can't remember. The Bamboo used to be a really great budget one. I don't know if it is anymore. Um, it's basically, as I understand it, you've got to basically choose ones based off what you want. And then, you know, I basically did the research into what I want. And the answer is, I don't know. I just want a good, like, sort of all-round one. And apparently want some, a, a really good one is the Cintiq 16, which is, you know, at a reasonable price. Um, and I, it was certainly, I would say, a high-end sort of tablet. But I'm not going to say it's the... I'm not going to say it's quite at professional level. Well, it might be at professional level. Like, expert sort of professional level sort of pricing. Because it costs, like, a couple hundred. Um, I think it was about 500 or something, which, you know is a decent amount of money you know let, let's not go crazy but it's also you know i do make money you know drawing art so it's not absolutely insane um it's a hobby i do basically all the time and um it, it's sort of like uh, the sort of line of reasoning that people use um when it comes to like buying um beds and mattresses it's something that you spend one third of your life on you should that is something you should shell out a lot of money to get a good one for and so it, it's sort of like uh, the same sort of things it's one of the things i spend uh spend a lot of time doing you know it's the same sort of logic, like, I spend a lot of time on my computer, so I spend a lot of money on this computer to make sure that it's all got the, um, the latest upgrades and that sort of thing. But, but the wildest thing is, is that the, high, the highest end graphics tablet which I saw, which was, um, I think it was Cintiq 24 Pro or something, totally overkill for my needs. But if I was, like, a professional, you know, digital artist or graphic designer or whatever, that'd probably be reasonable. Um, but that is basically the sort of, like, right now, de facto professional, professional level standard. Um, that is like £2,400 and that is like twice as expensive as, as this computer, <laughs> which is insane, you know, the tablet itself costs more than the computer, but that, you know, that basically sort of happens when you start buying like professional tools, uh, they get very expensive and very, because they're very specific. I like it. I'm sure if you do photography, you know that sort of deal, you know, entry level cameras, I'm sure like you can probably get a decent one. An okay one for sub 100, a lot of people just use their phones are pretty reasonable as well. But once you want to start getting into like professional tier, expert tier, um, you really had to start spending like thousands. And that's just for the camera itself, and that's not even considering like attachments and lenses and other sort of, ex I don't know what other accessories you need for photog uh, photography because I'm not a photographer, but things like that. And then, you know, if you're doing like studio photography, you need to get all the setup and like with lighting, with the diffused things. And then if you're doing into uh, like filming, you need to get like all this high tech like camera equipment and stuff like that. It's just, and it gets insane expensive. Like the jump up price is ridiculous because um, the people who are using it are professionals. Um, where people who make it can afford to charge up price and actually kind of had to charge up price because the only people buying it are such a niche, niche audience of professionals and the professionals have to buy it so they're willing to spend huge amounts of money for it. I mean it's part of the, you know it's also like similar reasons why Adobe Photoshop and all these Adobe products are so expensive for the layperson is because you're not expected to be buying it as a layperson but they're priced that way so um, companies purchase them because the companies are forced to purchase them basically in bulk because that's basically what all uh, like artists are trained to to use or photographers or whatever you know anyone who uses any sort of digital art medium um so the companies are one shedding that expenses not the individuals but from an individual level trying to buy it you're just like that's crazy um but the good thing is is that there's always good alternatives you know to these sort of things you know for every photoshop there's a clip studio paint which will have basically like 80 percent of the uh, the features you'll use if, if you're not professional it'll probably basically have all the features you'll need and more uh, compared to say the actual professional standard of the industry standard that's the word photoshop um it, it doesn't have literally everything but it has basically all that you'll need and then uh, if you find that if you find that it's missing features that you need you're probably at the level where you you should be paying for like the professional sort of price points of these sort of things you know <laughs> if for the layperson the difference between like a thousand pound professional thing to like a two thousand pound professional thing probably makes no difference whatsoever you know they'd be probably be quite satiated with like a you know 200 pound thing at max but you know for a professional it's just insane you know musical instruments i always think about like um how like um the musical instruments that people always have um tend to be um you know, the ones that you'll start off with probably like less than a hundred pounds or something, but when you start getting really good, like I got really good, like um <laughs> like it's it's a completely crazy thing, but like um I, I played violin for quite a while up to I don't know what grade I got up to grade six or something. Um and like one of my like uncles or grandparents, I can't even remember who bought it, bought like me like this crazy expensive violin from China. Like this it, it came from like a top one of the top like 
music schools or something from China, like one of the, one of the brands they use, it was like a thousand pounds or something. It's insane. But also, you know, playing it, the, the quality of it compared to like whatever um, violin I was using before, which probably cost maybe a couple hundred. I don't really know off the top of my head. It's insanity, but it sounds so much better. It feels better to play. <laughs> it's, and I wasn't even quite at a level where I probably could notice every single nuance, but it's just some, there's something very instinctive that you build up after you, you, you know, get some experience within any sort of, um, well, any sort of um, thing where you can build up any level of skill in, um, you just, you can instinctively sort of feel those small differences and those differences actually matter in the end. Um, but certainly when you're starting out digital art, you can, and I'm talking about digital art because that's just like what I was looking into. When you're starting out with digital art, you can kind of do whatever as your medium, you know. I've seen like really great artists use MS Paint and a mouse, which was insane. Um, you can, you know, pencil and paper and say any cheap, you can use that. Uh, it's not digital, but you know, you still build up the art fundamentals, which is always good. Um, people use their phone, which is crazy to me, you know. I, I can't even imagine using my phone to like actually draw. I actually did try, but I think it's certainly something that you need like um, a phone pen for. Otherwise it's insane. Oh yeah, Wisp is here. It's actually been so long since it, it's been late enough that Wisp has actually visited. Why not help him out? <laughs> Um, but yeah, but people use their phones or whatever. It doesn't really matter about the equipment you use. So it's always, you know, it's always nice, I suppose, to get talented enough at any sort of skill or ability to reach a point where the intro level, the like budget recommended starter equipment, is no longer, no longer cuts it for you, for whatever reason, for reasons you wouldn't understand when you first started, you know, pursuing um, that hobby. Now, now you're good enough that you can actually see the flaws in it. Isn't that great? You know, it's a bit depressing, you know, at some point. Well, not depressing. Being like, oh, now I have to shell out extra cash. Now things are all so much expensive. You know, as if sad things about hobbies, the further you get into them, the more expensive they get. But I suppose to put more of a positive spin on it, it's sort of like, it's sort of a mark about, look how good you are at it now. You're good enough to know what the small differences are which make, you know, equipment better or worse or yourself better and worse, right? You know, I imagine it happens when you come to sports. Buy up any old trainers, you know, get them from Clarks, get them from... MS or whatever doesn't really matter as, as long as they fit and they're comfortable when you run them but then you know if you do a lot of sport you start to you start noticing exactly what's exactly wrong with them you know maybe the, the ship isn't quite um, the fit isn't quite right to your shoe shape maybe the, the materials they use they wear wear away a little bit too quick quickly the grip isn't great or something like that or maybe it's too bulky it's too like lopsided like maybe it actually throws off your balance I don't know this is all stuff I'm spouting randomly because I'm not obviously an expert in athletics or anything like that. But it matters. I mean, there's a reason. There's, a, there's markets for professional brands and these sort of things. You know, you go to any sort of hobby. You, you talk to anyone who's an expert in any sort of hobby, they can probably name you like which brands are the, the de facto, like, not even just industry standard, but the de facto brands to turn to for like um, top quality stuff. I mean, you look at the pricing for all of them, they're all super expensive. But to be fair, shout out to the brands who are like the industry standard, who also have like... um budget level ones to help um, people who are sort of just like starting out in your hobby get into it right <laughs> makes it a smooth transition because they're sort of brands you'll get familiar with i don't know just trying to think about other things i know where that's certainly the case <laughs> um i mean i guess it doesn't really happen with video games now i think about it like um i suppose the only exception might be for like pc gaming make sure you get like better and better sort of um equipment to play games but really not many games require ridiculous graphic um components to you know execute properly many games can be um excuse me played decently on a laptop you don't need anything crazy for it to really work out in the end but um yeah i'm not gonna say video games is an exception because video game I think video game, instead of having, like, professional and, you know, like, budget sort of, like, entry-level points, you know, especially thinking about console games, it just instead has a sort of, like, fixed price to get into, to get into any of it. It's not like you, I mean, there is a Nintendo Switch Pro, I suppose, but, <laughs> I mean, it's not that big a, big a deal. Like, the price difference between the, like, the, the normal and the Pro is not crazy. It's, like, fairly reasonable. I, I can't imagine there's more than £200 difference. No, that's that's way too small. Now I think about it. Let's say not not more than like five hundred pounds different. Nintendo Switch. Let, let's see how much it costs. Nintendo Switch is like a hundred and forty pounds now. What? Okay, here we go. Like two hundred and 
280, 300 ish. Also, I can hear her shooting stars, so we should probably wish upon a star. Was it Among Us Nintendo Switch? 70 pounds? 300 pounds. Okay, so it's about 250, let's say, Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch. Probably, maybe my 200 pounds guess was not. Isn't it my Nintendo Switch? Oh no, it's, uh, it's Nintendo Switch OLED. O uh, Ole, as I said. 300, that, it's actually only about 50 pound difference. 100 pounds. Okay, so my 200 pound guess was actually much more reasonable. Um, but it's not like the price point is actually that crazy a difference, you know. Normally, I like the price point points difference for hobbies is like obviously entry level is kind of like free. You use whatever free equipment you use, whatever you already own. You use um, very cheap equipment, and then you like free to under ten pounds or under fifty pounds is probably like sort of like entry level sort of um, equipment costs. And then when you start getting sort of like amateurish, you know, under two hundred pounds or so, then when you start getting like expert. You know, it'd be like under, under you know, 800 ish maybe under a 1,000, and then, you know, when you're professional, you can get, like, 2,000 plus or something. <laughs> Obviously, that's going to vastly vary depending on the hobby. Like, if your hobby is boat sailing or something, then, you know, probably the entry level is not going to be about 50 pounds. I don't think you can... Well, I guess you can build a boat. You know, if you're in an Enid Blyton novel and your name is George and you like to build rowing boats is it is that the character who built the boats it's been so long since i read um, famous five or so i don't really recall um i, th I think she like, built boats or something or maybe no you know what i think i'm getting confused with the, the day that the whales came in that book by michael Walpurgo? i'm not really sure i think that one had like a character who built boats or something in it i think i might be getting confused but i think they did have a, a boat in famous five i don't know anyone anyone read any each enid blinton recently <laughs> can tell me about that um but yeah i forgot what i was gonna say um i'm sure i was gonna say something and it was gonna be like super profound and you were gonna be like whoa i can't believe you said that dear darling you're so like smart um you're really cool funny um here's a million pounds and i'm i can't believe you didn't get me too many <laughs> i don't know where this joke's going i'm gonna be honest um yeah i don't know just sort of like is, is, is it both good and bad? Well, actually, it's mostly bad, you know, having to spend even more money to get, like, the professional level sort of services that you require for whatever hobby you end up partaking, you know. Or you might be like, it's kind of discouraging, I suppose, to, to get any further into a hobby. But, you know, on the bright side, sometimes if you get further, further enough into a hobby, you can start, you know, earning some money from it. Just throwing it out there. Um, where, Wisp, where are your other soul pieces? <laughs> Do they even exist? So, you know, m maybe that's something I should judge it by. You know, I should see how much money have I earned from doing um, some art stuff and then, like, use that to purchase the next um, tablet. But I think that's probably what I'm going to go for. I'm probably probably going to go for a display tablet. Um, and the one I've been thinking about is the, Sin the Syntex 16. Because that seemed like a reasonable one. Um, I, I was comparing the 16, uh, Syntex 16 to a Pro, but and it feels like I'm not at the level where the Pro would matter enough. Like, I think I would notice a difference, but it would not be worth the, uh, the £1,000 investment. Like, extra investment. Like, the Syntec's like five, 500 or something, Syntec Pro is like 1600 or something last time I saw. And I was like, oh my god, that's expensive. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't justify that yet. Maybe if I maybe if I made like five times from that and like doing art stuff and maybe I'd be like, yeah, okay. Maybe I can start investing into it. But, you know, at some point, because... It's the sort of thing where, you know, the, the jump from my bat, my basic monoprice tablet, I can't remember what it, what it was, but hold on, maybe I can find it. Monoprice graphics tablet. I don't even remember how long I had that. That was something I bought when I was way, way young. Like back in GCSEs or something. Was it this one? This looks kind of familiar. 6.25 6 inch. I don't think they make it anymore. £150. It did not cost that much when I bought it. It cost £20 when I bought it. Um... And then, I forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say about this? Oh yeah, but the change from that monoprice tablet to this Huion tablet was huge. So I think the jump from this Huion tablet to that, to a display tablet is also going to be like equally huge again. 
because it's a thing like you can do really good art with obviously just um, a graphics tablet but it's also kind of annoying because it was a bit of a steeper learning curve which is unusual um to say the least but if you're a complete beginner you probably actually find it a lot easier to draw on a display tablet than you would on um a graphics tablet and in fact a lot of beginners do you know they have like tablets and like ipads or something like that um which tend to be pretty good for drawing on in the first place which I've also been considering getting at some point, but I, I wouldn't get an iPad. I would, I would probably what I'd get would, I'd, might be like from Microsoft Surface or something, you know, a touchscreen sort of laptop which can also double as um, a graphics tablet. Was that? Was that a shooting star? I thought I had a shooting star. When you wish upon a star, where is this soul fragment? Um. But anyway, that sort of jump up was is probably going to be insane. You know, it's going to be. But the part I'd be looking forward to the most is how much easier it's going to make things to draw, you know. Just being able to draw and actually see directly where my line is rather than, you know, having to draw being like, oh, you know, my, my wrist position was slightly off, so it's a bit off centre. Being actually physically able to draw on the thing itself. That's, that's what I'm excited for. Just the convenience of it. Because it's, it's at the, the point where I think drawing on a display tablet actually would probably make me significantly faster at drawing. You know, I'm, I'm, I've gotten to a stage where I feel like I'm proficient enough to be reasonably quick at drawing. Um, like, you, you can actually certainly see that through the, the amount of time I've taken through um, some thumbnail arts. Like, a lot of my early ones, I'd, I'd take, like, six to seven hours or something very basic, which, you know, if I do it now, would probably take me about two hours. Um, sped up significantly quite a lot. Um, so, I, I can't imagine, like, probably not a huge amount of time saved from switching to a graphics tablet. But if that was a price judgment alone, it probably wouldn't be worth it. Um considering but you know all the other features that come with it just it feels it feels right you know and can you also use like um the graphics tablet as like another screen so like i could just have my drawing software on my graphics tablet and then use my other two screens for whatever they want or does it have to mirror one screen i don't actually know if that how that works to be perfectly honest but um yeah i don't know you know, the more I'm talking about it, the more I'm sort of talking myself into it, being like, yeah, I think I think this makes sense for a time for me to upgrade, you know? I'm, I'm always so hesitant when it comes to spending a lot of money, and you know, a lot of people are quite hesitant when it comes to spending over a lot of money and, like, splurging and treating myself, I suppose, to that, to that instant. But, you know, in this case, it's rather justified. Like, I was really, like, hesitant the first time I was, like, getting a computer, but, you know, I was talking to my parents, my parents were like, you might as well, you use it so much, you might as well spend good and make it last a long time. And it did last a long time. And then I upgraded again. And, you know, it's, again, hesitant to be like, I don't want to, um, uh, we don't always do something new because we don't care about something expensive, but something new always gives us an item we don't have in our catalogue, slash an item we have in our catalogue, but of a different colour. So that's why we always do that. Um, but I'm talking myself into it, being like, yeah, I, I you know, splurge on your hobbies, <laughs> that sort of thing. That's kind of a point of your hobbies in the first place, you know. You, you don't have to be so frugal when it comes to something you, you do all the time, right? Also reminds me, I got these Copic markers like um, last year for my friends, and I still have not gotten around to properly drawing something on them. I've, I've only drawn very basic things, but it's it's just hard, you know. As I, I said before, it's always very intimidating switching sort of mediums, and especially a lot of the time when I'm, I find myself I've got some free time to do some art, I'm always like, I'm gonna do a bit of digital art. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> a lot of respect goes to traditional artists, you know. <laughs> I'm so used to digital art now that it's sort of like the change of being like, oh, I'm, I'm not, I can't erase, I can't like adjust things anymore. I don't know, I don't know how I can do that switch. But recently I was talking to someone, and she's um, a traditional, much more of a traditional artist, um, and she said she bought like an iPad to try and do digital art, and she she just found the, the switch so awkward. You know, it just goes to show you know, humans are human beings. We're just we're just like we're creatures of habit. We we're comfortable with what we know, right? Are we really like is what we know? So it makes it makes it difficult to do any like massive pivots or whatever. But you know, if you just like buckle down and learn it, you'll realise you have a lot more transferable skills than you might imagine. No? Probably. <laughs> anyway, it's quite late, so I'm gonna round off this episode and cut kind of a little bit short compared to usual, but I don't know what I'm gonna title this episode. Mmm Industry Standard? I don't think that really makes sense. Yo you saw me through the, the building? That's incredible, Phoebe. You have X-ray vision? Um, sure. So exciting. Do this trade. A masquerade mask, why not? <laughs> um, what am I going to title this episode? Expensive hobbies? 
I feel like I've talked about that before. Expensive. I feel like I talked about hobbies before. That's just such a hop and it might come up. Retirement hobby? Why not? I don't remember talking. Oh no, I do remember talking about that. And almost certainly I was saying I would love to learn to knit. <laughs> when I'm tired. Ah, what? Anyway, I'm going to round up this episode here. I'm going to call this expensive or hobby expenses. That probably makes more sense. So if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Any likes, comments, subscription shares are greatly appreciated. Join my Dear Darling Discord. Follow me on Twitter down below. Hope to see you again. Bye for now. Have farewell. So until next time, bye bye for now.